Hey guys, my name is Nagura and today I'm gonna do a 9.1 Moonkin guide for night face. Quite a few people didn't want to go Venthyr, understandably, even though Venthyr seems to be the better choice for rating overall. We're still not 100% sure about this and we still need to see how it looks like in practice, so some people want to stay night fae until they know more and that's totally fine. So I'm just gonna do this night fae guide because there's quite a few things that did actually change for night fae too, just to make sure you guys are covered and know exactly what you should be doing as night fae. One thing to know before I go into the guide is that this is a video guide, so whenever there is any changes or things that we figure out over the course of practicing more in the raid and so on, I can't actually update this guide, so do make sure that for any sort of updates, make sure you're checking out the Dream Grove channel, the Moonkin Discord, and also go over to my stream over at twitch.tv slash Nagura if you have any questions or you want to know if there's anything that changed in this guide. Now let's get into it. First of all, I want to talk about the actual changes that happened to uh, Moonkin and generally Nightway 9.1. So first of all, the moons have been changed. They've been buffed slightly. The recharge timer went from 25 seconds to 20 seconds and the damage from half moon and new moon has been buffed by 33%. Full Moon did not get buffed, and Solstice increased shooting star's chance is reduced from 3% to 250%. So in the last row, we have Moons buffed and Solstice nerfed. For Night Fate, this actually means that you will use Moons on single target, Solstice on spread out AoE, and Fury of a Loon on stacked AoE. So you will actually use all of those talents for different kinds of scenarios. Now, additional changes have been to Stellar Drift. Stellar Drift now has been reworked to no longer increase the duration of Starfall, but it will increase the damage of Starfall by 50%, and it will add a 12 second CD to Starfall. Balance of all things has been nerfed. It will now have a crit chance per stack for 3% and it will start at 8 stacks or 24% and it reduces over 8 seconds instead of 5 seconds. So you will not gain as big of a crit chance at the start but it will stay for longer. This is quite a big nerf to balance of all things. It will actually not play this anymore as Night Fae. So our best new legendary is going to be Primordial Arcanic Pulsar. I will talk about this later. Then Imperial Ordinance, the trinket from Spires, now incurs a 40 second trinket cooldown on your second unused trinket. This means that you will no longer play two unused trinkets as a Night Fae Moonkin. Then there's a new Covenant Legendary that has been added and recently also has been buffed. Celestial Spirits halves the cooldown of Convoke and reduces the channel time to 3 seconds to a 1 minute CD and 12 spell cast basically and increases the chance of a full moon. Now you still get 16 Nia stacks, so Grove Invigoration Mastery stacks, and it uses a deck of cards system, so it makes Convoke cast one full moon every two Convoke casts. And it also slightly more than half the Star Search and Wrath cast because of the reduced cast that we're actually getting out with those 12 casts instead of 16. So this legendary, even with the buff, is unfortunately just not very good for us. So we're not actually going to be playing this legendary in any scenario as it stands right now. We're just going to be playing Pulsar as Night Phase in almost every scenario. There's some niche scenarios where you can run different legendaries in PvE. PvP is a different kind of story. This is going to be a full PvE guide. But this legendary, unfortunately, just not very good for us. Okay, so now we're talking about Moonkin as Night Fae. First of all, we're gonna go into the Soul Binds. Nia is our go-to Soul Bind, and this is how the tree most of the time will look like. I guess the only important thing you want to note here is that we're not going for the third potency conduit. We are going for Nia's burst most of the time. Sometimes you do want to go for the third potency, but that's only a thing if it's like heavy AoE or if there's any sort of like immune targets that Nia's burst can proc on because it procs on immune targets, unfortunately. So if there's any sort of immune targets or there's more than like three or four targets, then you would want to go for a third potency. If you're raiding, most of the time you want to go for Nia's burst basically. And if you're playing a plus, you want to go for that third potency slot usually. So for the conduits you want to go for here, you definitely want to go for the Convoke conduit because that's just by far the best one. So you definitely want to have the Convoke conduit. Then your second conduit should be Fury of the Skies. That's uh, your best go-to conduit as your second choice. And as your third choice, there's quite a few different ones you can go for. You can go for 
umbrella intensity, which is pretty good for if there's like really heavy AoE going on because it increases your starfire cleave damage basically. So, you know, like if you're doing really, really heavy AoE or really big pulls and then plus, then you can also go for precise alignment. It's a pretty nice conduit as well. It extends your cooldowns. It's pretty similar damage gain to umbrella intensity depending on the situation, but it's not too important what you go for as your third potency conduit because the third potency conduit is not that big of a damage gain anyway so just kind of go for whatever you think is best for you just don't go for stellar empowerment because it's really bad <laughs> but going precise alignment or umbral intensity is totally fine all right so now let's talk about stats a little so for night fate there aren't any like super clear stat priorities that we have so you should sim your character to figure out which items gems or enchants you should be using there's also no stat caps anything like that okay there's no stats you should be aiming for there's no stat caps there's nothing like that i know that's not something you want to hear people want to have like a certain goal to reach when it comes to stats because it's just easier right people just want to hear listen just go for this amount of haste or this amount of mastery and and it just makes the gearing a little bit easier for people if they have a goal to reach but that's just not how it works unfortunately and you just have to sim your character to see what's best for you because stats are very very individual depending on how your stat distribution looks like different items are going to be better for you than for another moonkin as night face specifically first of all i will sim your character to see which items are best that you already have and then if you don't know which items to go for, you can sim drop the miser, and then you can specifically figure out which items you should be going for, like in the dungeons, uh, which items you should be going for in a raid, and so on, right? So you can also sim your vault as well. When your vault pops, you can just open up your vault. Once it's open, you can type simc slash simc, and then copy paste it into your top gear, raid bots, profile, whatever. And then you get the vault options as like item options in your top gear. And it's much, much easier to figure out what you should be going for. If you don't know how to sim, I also made a whole guide on this on my YouTube. You can just check it out as well. I will link it in the description below. All right, so moving on to items and legendaries. So our best legendary in all situations for PvE is Primordial Arcanic Pulsar. And you want to craft it on a ring. You want to equip all five domination socket slots as well. And the best set is the Chaos Bane set. So you want to have all three unholy shards. Additionally, you want to go for a shard of back and shard of core, which are the two DPS shards of the non unholy sets. So this actually means that we have six locked in slots. Basically, we have head, shoulders, chest, gloves and boots and one ring as well because of the legendary that you cannot replace. Like those are domination socket slots plus your legendary slots. So you should be keeping this in mind when you're choosing items from your vault or when you're, you know, like just getting items or thinking about buying BOEs or whatever. Now for trinkets, you want to equip one unused trinket and a passive trinket. Since we play Pulsar, we will use Convoke every two minutes instead of every three minutes like before, and therefore we can or should use a two minute CD trinket. There are good two minute trinkets that um, I can think of is Soul Letting Ruby from Theater of Pain is really good. And you can also go for Shadowed Orb of Torment from Remnant of Nursul in Sanctum of Domination. For passive trinkets, you can go for Titanic Ocular Gland. Keep in mind, it has a bad side effect, so don't wanna use this if you're below 50% HP a lot. Then we have Forbidden Necromantic Tome, Tome of Monstrous Constructions, Infinitely Divisible Ooze, Unbound Changeling, and Soul Cage Fragment. As always, make sure you're simming these options for you specifically. If you have some of those trinkets, just sim it to see what the best combination is for you. And also sim Drop Demise to see what the best trinket will be for you to go for. So for talents, some things change, but not too much. So we're still going for nature's balance most of the time in a rating scenario. We will still go for force of nature in mythic plus. We sometimes go for warrior of a loon in like heavy burst AOE scenarios or like really sustained AOE scenarios with like four or more targets for like a long time. That's where you would want to go for warrior of a loon. Otherwise you just always go for nature's balance in a raid. Then I'm not going to talk about the utility talents because those are just situational. Level 40 row. We are now playing with Incarnation actually as Night Fae. We no longer go for Star-Lord. So Incarnation is going to be our go-to single target choice. And for any sort of AoE scenarios, we're going to go for Soul of the Forest because without Soul of the Forest, our Starfire basically does no damage. Well, no cleave damage. 
And with Soul of the Forest, our Starfire all of a sudden does like quite a lot of damage and we can start cleaving on AoE. So definitely go for Soul in any AoE raiding scenario or in plus scenario and Incarn on single target. Then for the 45 row, we're going to go for Stellar Flare still for single target. While we go for Stellar Drift as our go-to like AoE talent in a raid. And Twin Moons would be our more consistent AoE talent that we go for because Stellar Drift, of course, now has a Starfall cooldown, which means that if there's ads up all the time, then you would rather probably want to go for um, Twin Moon so you can Starfall more often. But the thing is, in a raiding scenario, almost all the time, the AoE that you need is not like consistent AoE. Almost always it's more of a like situational AoE and then Stellar Drift is just better and it also makes you cast while moving, which is also very valuable in raiding scenarios, while Twin Moons does not give you that casting while moving bonus. So therefore Stellar Drift should be your go-to choice of talents if it's a non-single target scenario and you don't want to play Stellar Flare. Now for the last row, as I talked about earlier, New Moon is our new single target talent that we go for. I will talk about how to play with this later on. And then Solstice will be our spread AoE choice, and Fury of Loom will be our stacked AoE choice. Okay, quickly talking about the opener here. Keep in mind, I recorded this opener on a dummy and not on a raid encounter. If you're getting in combat with a raid encounter, then your astral power will reset to 50 as soon as you enter combat. This will not happen in this video because I'm not actually in a raid, and therefore you will have a little bit less astral power than I have in this video. I think I actually star searched one additional time in the video, and that's not something you can actually do realistically in game. So how the opener would look like, you go on max range, this is important because otherwise you're gonna be pre-pulling the boss. So at between three and four seconds, you will start casting Wrath twice, then you go into Starfire, and then you cast all of your dots. So Wrath, Wrath, Starfire, dots. Then you use your Incarnation, then you Star Search twice. I actually Star Search three times, I think, in a video, because I have this additional Astro Power that you wouldn't have. So you cast Star Search two times after your cooldowns, then you cast Convoke, and then you Star Search as many times as you can until you can't star search anymore. Then you cast new moon, half moon, star search, and then full moon. All right, so let's go over this again. Wrath, wrath, starfire, dots, incarnation, star search times two, convoke, star search until you can't anymore, then new moon, half moon, star search, full moon. So since we don't play balance of all things anymore, we don't actually need to use convoke as soon as we enter our cooldowns, that's why we actually star search first and then we convoke. So we don't have like this crit buff and it's not as important to convoke at the start. Also, if you're using your cooldowns a second or third time within a raid encounter, then you actually want to use your cooldowns with high astral power, then star search first and then convoke, right? Because how we used to use our cooldowns before was we used Incarnation or we Celestial Alignment with Convoke at the same time, so we wanted to use our cooldowns at like 40 Astral Power, otherwise we would be overcapping. But since we are not using Convoke immediately anymore, you don't have to worry about overcapping and therefore you can just go higher Astral Power before you use your cooldowns, and it's actually preferred. So you would want to use your cooldowns at like 90 Astral Power, then Star Search like two or three times, and then Convoke afterwards to get like the most Star Searches into your cooldown window. All right, so now we're going about over the single target priority list outside of our cooldown window. So you want to keep up Moonfire, Sunfire, and Stellar Flare, and refresh them in the Pandemic window. So it's actually a really small DPS gain to refresh your dots outside of your eclipse window now if you don't have solstice talented so if you have new moon or fury of loon you do want to refresh your dots outside of eclipse which is not something we did before because we always play with solstice so with solstice it, it was always better to refresh your dots at the end of eclipse it, within the pandemic window and now it's actually better to exit the eclipse and then refresh your dots if it's in pandemic of course you don't want to refresh them if they still have a lot of duration left then you just refresh them whenever inside an eclipse but if you can exit the eclipse without letting the dot fall off then you should exit eclipse and then refresh you should always enter solar eclipse if you have the choice of course then you should cast moons if you are in lunar eclipse 
or if you're over capping charges, then you should cast them in solar eclipse. If possible, you also want to save some of the charges for celestial alignment or incarnation as well. You want to cast star surge when you would over cap astral power before entering the next eclipse. So this results in a similar playstyle than we did before with both. You kind of just enter eclipse and you dump your star surges and then you pull again for the next eclipse. But because we don't play with both anymore, it's actually not as important to star search at the start of your eclipse as it used to be. We still have the star search bonus to our fillers, to our wrath and our starfire, but those are pretty weak, those bonuses, and you don't really have to play around them. It's not a big damage loss to not play around them. So you can now actually pull astral power for movement if you want to. So you don't need to like dump your star surges at the start if you feel like you have to move soon. Then you can just like star surge once, cast some fillers. Do you have to move? If yes, then move and cast star surges while moving. If you don't have to move, then just dump your star surges anyway and, and keep casting and ramp for your next eclipse. Then if you're in solar eclipse, you cast wrath and you cast starfire if you're in lunar eclipse. You cast dots if you have nothing to do and you don't have any astral power while moving. One thing to note is that you actually start casting starfire in solar eclipse on single target if you have more than 110% haste. So that's something you can track. You can track your haste percentage. And if you're above that, it's actually a little bit of a gain to start casting Starfire in solar eclipse instead of casting Wrath. But this should only happen with like, you know, Bloodlust or any sort of like really big haste buffs that you get. Then if you have Alkin Frenzy procs, if you're in Lunar Eclipse, you should use them as soon as you can. If you're in Solar Eclipse, you should only use them when there's three or more targets or you have to move and otherwise you just let them expire. Okay, let's quickly talk about our cooldown usage. Since we now use Pulsar, the legendary as Night Phase, we can use our Convoke every two minutes now instead of having to wait for our incarnation every three minutes. So we're not holding our Convoke anymore. We are basically using our CN Convoke on pull, then we use Convoke with a Pulsar proc two minutes into the fight, then we use Incarn plus Convoke again at four minutes. And of course, this depends on kill time though. If the boss dies at four minutes, then you can only use Incarn twice and also Convoke only twice. So at that point, you should be lining them up, obviously, right? But if you can get more Convokes than you can get Incarns, then you should be just lining up your Convoke with Pulsar in between. So here's actually an example of how to use your convo with a pulsar proc. You do want to make sure that your high astra power when you proc your pulsar, and then you want to make sure you're dumping it into star surges, then you cast convoke, and then you do whatever time you have left. There usually it's not that much time left after dumping your star surges and convoking. So at that point, you can just, you know, I maybe you have a full moon that still fits in, or maybe you can cast a half moon into a star surge, a few rafts into a star surge, whatever fits into your last few seconds there. One more thing to note about Pulsar is that you should try to have a high stacked Pulsar before you use your cooldowns, your incarnation not on pull, but on all the other situations, because your Pulsar proc of Incarn actually extends your incarnation that is already up, like your normal Incarn. But keep in mind that if you already have a Pulsar proc up, and then you press Incarn afterwards, then your incarnation will override your Pulsar proc and not extend it. So incarnation into Pulsar proc, yes. Pulsar proc into incarnation, no. If you have a pulsar proc up, you want to just get through it and then use incarn afterwards. But it's not ideal to do that because, as I said, it's preferred to actually have a high stacks of pulsar before using your cooldowns to get a really, really long incarnation. Just keep extending it with your pulsar proc. Now let's talk about full moon and uh, convoke real quick because some people don't know exactly how it works and we have figured something out with the addition of this new covenant legendary we actually have figured out that our convoke even without the covenant legendary works with a stacked deck system so there's five deck of cards basically and if you enter combat you have a chance of getting one of those five decks when you cast Convoke, and only one of those five decks actually includes Full Moon. That means that when you cast Convoke for the first time in, inside like a raid combat, you will get one of those five Convokes, 
then you will get one out of the four convokes that are still left, then on your third convoke, you will get one of the three convokes that is still left, and so on. So only one of those five actually has full moon, and therefore you only have a 20% chance of casting a full moon on your first convoke, a 25% chance on getting a full moon on your second convoke, and so on. So it's actually impossible for you to get two full moons on a raid fight because there's no raid fight that actually lasts six times two minutes. And even if you have a fight like that, then the sixth convoke that you cast actually only is a 20% chance again on getting a full moon because the dex has, has been reset and it's again a 20% chance. This is just how Moonkin works and this is why you haven't gotten multiple full moons on a fight unless you die. If you actually die, then you leave combat and once you get rest, your deck has been reset basically and you're starting again with the 20% chance. So the only way to actually get multiple full moons is just, you know, get a full moon on your first convoke then die, get rest, get lucky again, get a full moon, die, get rest, right? So that is a strategy you can go for, but I don't recommend it during progression. <laughs> now, I'm also going to list two more macros that I think is useful for Night Fae. I will be listing them below. I will recommend for you to use two bindings now. We got away with using only one binding for our cooldowns before when we played with Balance of All Things, because we almost always use Convoke with incarnation slash celestial alignment and we never really use convoke outside of that so we just macroed it all into one big like one shot macro basically and we just pressed it but since we don't really want to use convoke anymore as soon as we enter our cooldowns because we don't have that crit chance anymore that we have to play around so therefore we don't actually want to use convoke as soon as we press our cooldowns because we want to pull high astral power before we press it and then we don't want to convoke because otherwise we would be overcapping. So it's much more beneficial to make two macros now. One macro I have for the incarn slash celestial alignment macro. The way the macro is written is basically that it, it has a show tooltip, so you just see the cooldown of it. Then it has a stop macro no form. That just means that it will not cast this if you're not in Moonkin form. Then it will cast Celestial Alignment. This will also cast Incarnation if you have specced into it. You don't have to change this. You can just keep it as Celestial Alignment. Then it will clear your target and use 13. 13 means that's your first trinket slot. This is only useful for inscrutable quantum device, so it doesn't actually use the execute effect of quantum device. And if you don't use quantum device, you can just keep this in the macro, it doesn't actually matter, you just keep it in. And then it has the target last target, so will, you will have your target again. You, you won't even notice that you're clearing your target here because it's happened so quickly. Again, if you don't use quantum device, you can just leave this in. Then it has a use potion of spectral intellect in here. You can remove this if you don't constantly want to use potions in like open world combat or whatever, and you can just add it back in for a rating. Optionally, I put a cast star search in there because celestial alignment and potion and trinket is not on a global cooldown. It's actually a little bit of a benefit to put one ability into your macro here. So it casts immediately, right? Because sometimes you use your macro and then like half a second or a second later you press another ability and then you lost like half a second of your uptime of your cooldowns. So I personally like macroing something like Star Surge or Star Fall into this macro, but that's the problem here. If you're macroing Star Surge into this macro, but you would actually want to Star Fall instead, then that's a problem, right? So you can change up Star Search or Star Fall depending on the situation, or you just remove this completely, or you just remove this last line, just press your cooldowns, and then press Star Search manually or Star Fall manually, depending on the situation you're in. Then I also have a Convoke macro listed below that basically just has a stop macro channeling Convoke of Spirits in there. It just prevents you from using this macro if you're already channeling Convoke. And that's kind of like a double clicking prevention. So if you're like accidentally double clicking it, or if you're already using Convoke for whatever other reason, then it's not like canceling it. And then there's also slash CQS, which is clearing your queued spells, because sometimes the, the way the queue system works is that sometimes if you already have queued up a spell and then you press convoke, it might immediately interrupt your convoke because it's trying to cast that spell that you queued up. So that's why this CQS is in there, just to prevent you from canceling your own convoke, which of course we don't want to happen. One more thing I just remembered to note about convoke, which a lot of people have this question and a lot of people ask me about it. Should you convoke in melee range or at range? Now, 
It is a very slight DPS gain to actually convoke in melee range because the rakes and thrash that is being casted by convoke does slightly more damage than the cast that you would be getting from ranged. The way convoke works is a bit funky as I talked about with the deck system, but the way the off spec spells work, so like the feral spells and the healing spells, is it kind of casts some of those spells no matter what. It will never cast 16 moonkin spells, yeah? It will always be a certain amount of moonkin spells, and then the rest will be filled with off spec spells. And it will depend on the situation. If you're unranged, it cannot cast rake or thrash because there's nothing in your range, and therefore it will cast heals for sure, right? But if you're in melee range, then it can cast thrash and rake and those other abilities, and therefore it will go for those. And that's why it's a very small DPS gain to actually convoke in melee range, but it's very, very minor, and you shouldn't, like, go for it, if it's any risk of you getting aggro, if it's causing you movement downtime, like if you're in a raid encounter and you have to like manually move all the way into melee range after pre-casting at ranged, that's not worth it because then all of a sudden you probably lose more damage from moving than what you have gained from the convoke, all right? So convoke in melee if you can, if, if it's no downtime, no downside, whatever, but otherwise don't force it, okay? And yeah, that's it. I do hope this guide helped you out a bit with your new rotation, with your new Night Fae priorities, with your pulls are legendary, and all that kind of stuff. If you have any more questions, ask in the description below, or come over to my stream at twitch.tv slash agura for any questions. And you can also, of course, always join the Dream Growth Discord. I will link in the description below. They have lots and lots of answers for you there. Most of the information in this video I got from the Dream Grove Discord from the Fiery Crafters, as every other information I get too, because the Moonkin Fiery Crafters are great and they figure out everything perfectly for us. God bless the Moonkin Fiery Crafters. And I'm just here to relay the information to you. So definitely go over to the Dream Grove Discord and check what they have to say. Look at the FAQs, look at the resources they have and the pinned messages. There's lots and lots of information there. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a nice rest of your day and I hope you enjoy 9.1 and I'll see you in the next video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, just give the video a like if you liked it and I'll see you next time. Bye.